Hey guys, got a really good episode of War of the Dark for you. We're looking at episode 21. This was a 36 million power punch up. It's also the war where I broke my damage record. Uh, because the enemy team had such powerful war defenses, I got some cool stuff to show you. So uh, let's get right into it. And we'll start with attack number one. We're doing X-Force against the Symbiotes. But instead of Venom, they have multiple men in there, which is going to feed my X-23, which is why I knew I could do this even at a 60k punch up. Now you'll notice... I only throw it on times two speed uh, on accident. I'll switch to times three once I realize why it's going so slow. Even if this was with Venom, because it wasn't boosted, I still would have felt comfortable taking this matchup just because X23 really does counter um, anti Venom to the extreme. Had he got knocked into yellow and gotten the dodge there, he would have got the double shot and that would have just instantly killed him, similar to Taskmaster. But even without that, the ability to block really does screw him, and we're able to finish him off before he gets to do anything. So there you go. I noticed we uh, had it on times two. I switched to times three, and we're just peeling these guys apart like nothing. You'll notice I didn't use the Domino uh, Ultimate. i rather use the Basic. I don't really find many teams except for Emirators need that uh, Disrupt. Instead, I'd rather call an Assist from one of the much, much stronger uh, X-Force members. So there you go. Easy win. So that was Symbiotes on defense. Now let's use our Symbiotes on offense. We're going to do a very big punch down. It's going to be my Symbiotes against the Inhuman Coulson team. Uh, a near 800k team against a 600k team. So it should be pretty safe. However, with the Coulson ult and the Black Bolt passive, this is still a dangerous fight, especially in security. And you notice my scream just barely avoided red. Luckily, the yo-yo special didn't hit her. Otherwise, Black Bolt would have yelled at her and surely killed her. Then I would have lost her passive with the speed up, and I would have lost her ultimate, which is going to play a really big factor into why this team works. So we go ahead and we load up the Black Bolt with that offense down. That's pretty important because I just don't want to risk him burping at anybody and knocking them out. We also steal the defense up and offense up from him. Unfortunately, we did kill that shield security. So we got to deal with the yo-yo, and because of that, I just say, screw it, let's go and take out the yo-yo first. Now I'm going to knock the Black Bolt into yellow, activating the Crystal Passive, which clears all his buffs. But I did that because I noticed he was about to drop into yellow anyway, and I wanted that Crystal Passive to go off before Scream's ultimate, so that he's going to keep that slow now, and it's really a, a big anchor on Black Bolt. His speed is definitely his Achilles heel. So there you go, I noticed the Black Bolt's pretty much almost dead. So let's go ahead and finish that off. We get to use our Symbiote Spider-Man ult on the uh, Yo-Yo. While she's stunned, we'll finish her off. Uh, Carnage gets to do the uh, honors there. And then Yo-Yo's gone. This is an easy win at this point. Now you'll notice I don't use Anti-Venom Special in War. Uh, it wouldn't really matter against this team because if somebody died, it's probably the Black Bolt. Uh, but I don't think you need to try and make it to a second Anti Venom Ultimate for all those buffs. I think if your team has survived up to that point, the damage Anti Venom puts out on those vulnerable targets vastly outweighs wasting a turn on that special. Unless you need the heal or the, dis or the uh, immunity, but obviously that's a case by case basis. I'd like to use his basic, big time damage. Here's attack number three. So now let's go against Uncanny X-Men with Doom, and you'll see I'm basically using OP soup. I got Zemo, Hella, Silver Surfer, and Black Bolt and Yo-Yo. Black Bolt and Yo-Yo just made their way to this team because I stopped using the Kestrel Black Bolt uh, Heroes for Hire counter. It's just a little too unreliable for what I like, and uh, I have a better option now with Infinity Watch. So. For this matchup, you want to ability block the Phoenix as soon as possible. You don't want to deal with that stealth. Captain Marvel actually dies before doing anything, which is pretty nuts. I didn't expect that. Here, I should have ability blocked the Doom. It would have been the safer move. But I figured my Hella is going to be going before the uh, Phoenix, so I'm going to be able to spread that ability block. Luckily, Doom did take his turn, killing a Greg. Hella goes first. I thought it spread the ability block. It didn't. I didn't realize that until after I hit that Black Bolt special. 
which knocked him so low, and then the Zemo passive knocks him into yellow. This is dangerous now, he's got a bunch of speed. Luckily he does have that uh, slow on him, so we have time to take him out before he uses his ult. So I got pretty lucky there. Always remember guys, you need to make sure that Doom has ability block before you knock him into yellow, or he's at least taking his first turn and you have a slow on him, like I did here. Uh, but I much prefer, you know, the safe way of having ability block on him. So we do get through this, which is pretty good. It was a slight punch down, but it was a Phoenix Doom team, so I'll take this as a win. So that was Uncanny on defense. Now let's use my Uncanny on offense. We're going to sub out uh, Wolverine and put Namor in, and we're going to do a giant punch down onto the Astonishing X-Men. This still was very dangerous. So it's almost lucky that I got through the Bishop as quickly as I did. Because you'll see this beast just starts rebalancing like crazy. And this is why Un uh, Astonishing X-Men is a very dangerous war defense team. You're much better off using Shadowlands if you have them built up enough. I can't wait to build up my Shadowlands. I'm almost done my dad bros, which I had to kind of shove at the head of the queue because of uh, Adam Warlock. But that's okay. Uh, I'm really enjoying playing on the uh, dad bros. And you'll actually get to see them later in this video. And in future videos now, because I got them all pretty much to gear tier 14. Uh, I think I need three more T4s on my Infinity Watch, and then I'll dump a bunch of T4s into the Dad Bros, and we should be able to do some really cool stuff and showcase their power going forward. So you see, uh, my Colossus luckily did resist the stun from Jubilee. Now, if I wanted to make this easier on myself, I should have saved the uh, Psylocke Ultimate longer than I did. And I could have got rid of these slows, and I think that would have been a much better use of uh, the Psylocke ultimate. You see, Beast, he just keeps healing us up, or healing his enemies, healing his team, my enemies up, and it's, uh, it's a big headache. I just can't catch a break. Cyclops has the uh, offense down when he's just about to ult, which could have taken the Beast out, but not with that offense down. And even Namor, with the offense up, the big time special damage, into the defense down Beast, not quite enough. Very unfortunate. And then Beast goes ahead and uses his, uh, his ultimate. Really buffing his team with the speed and the defense up, which is super, super annoying for us. So basically, we're waiting for our Phoenix to take our ultimate. And we just want Beast to be low enough that when she does, it's going to take him out. Or at least get him super low and... Uh, Someone else will be right up around the corner to knock him down. Now it's at this time I could have considered switching to Kitty. I should not have used the special here. Um, kind of a waste. Should have just basic. It's a bit more damage. But as you see, my Phoenix is going to get to go before the enemy beast, which is super important. She ults. He goes down finally. Uh, the rest of the members also get super low. Iceman loses his first life. And uh, yeah, so we're able to pull it off. But it's just because of the punch down. I do not recommend doing this anywhere near a punch across. It was almost lucky I got through the bishop as quickly as I did. There you go. So now that you saw Astonishing X Men on defense, let me show you them on offense. And it's a very interesting matchup, actually. It's Sinister Six, but with Magneto and Blob. Now it is a pretty big punch down, about 70k. It's a giant, giant uh, Doc Ock. And my saving grace here is that it was a pretty small blob. So uh, why these two with the Sinister Six make it a lot harder for the Astonishing X-Men to get the win here is because they get that blind. And what's gonna happen is Electro is also gonna apply offense down. So that's gonna give them three debuffs and Beast only clears two. So I was really hoping to clear as many blinds as possible. I didn't care if I kept the defense downs. Um, but you'll see my beast. He luckily survives that. That was very close. We go ahead and we use the uh, heal and cleanse here. I still have blind on my Jubilee and my Iceman, which really sucks because those slows, both of them do AoE slow. I really would have wanted one of them to make this fight a lot easier. I'll use the special here, I believe. Uh, just to do a little bit more damage to Magneto. 
probably would have been better off using the basic to try and peel the taunt off of Blob. So this is going to miss. Beast goes in. He doesn't clear off the taunt either. Blob goes. Some big damage. No one got knocked into yellow, kind of unfortunately there. Because then Beast would have used his uh, ultimate giving Bishop his offense up back. But there you go. Because it was a small blob, we do get through him. Um, that ad dies just from retaliation from the bishop with offense up. Next we take out the Magneto, and now we have so much speed that we're going to tear through it. I really do believe had that blob been about, I don't know, 30k stronger, I probably would have lost this fight. I probably would have been stuck behind him for just too long that the Doc Ock would have got his ultimate off, and I would have been in a lot of trouble. So there you go. And if that Electro got her ultimate or her special off with that offense up, that could have hurt. You see, I switched to the Electro instead of finishing off the uh, Doc Ock there. Only because I had Bishop special up and I knew that would have one-shot her. Which it did. Next we take out the Swarm. And there you go, guys. So that was a big uh, 70k punch down. However, it was a very tricky war defense team. And I actually like it. I might emulate that down the road if I ever get to work on my Brotherhood. Attack number six. This is the one everyone wants to see, guys. This is Infinity Watch against Kestrel for Hire at super high power. It is a 70,000 power punch down, but it's in security. And honestly, when you get into the 700k range, uh, 70k isn't as big a, a jump as, say, doing like a 300k into a 370k team. The numbers mean a bit less in the 700ks. But as you see, we basic the Kestrel. Now you could have used the special and steal in a bunch of death crews for your team. I don't find that necessary because they're not going to burst down anybody with these defense downs. Or the dodges for that matter. So I'd rather do the basic for the extra damage on Kestrel. She died right away. Perfect. Uh, the rest of this fight I kind of decided I wanted to play it as poorly as possible. I wanted to do the absolute wrong targets. Because uh, from what I saw I was just like holy crap like this... This is such a crazy counter. Let's see how much of a counter it could really be. So we're going to go for all the wrong targets. And I mean, you'll see how it plays out. I basically invite the calling to beat up on me. And uh, she'll do just that, but it's tickling me. So Iron Fist loses a charge. Which, by the way, if you're watching this, kill Colleen first. Kill Colleen first, then kill Misty Knight. Iron Fist is out of charges. All the big damage, even through that uh, defense up. Iron Fist gets beat up a little bit more. And uh, Nebula goes in and finishes him. I guess her uh, her assist and her basic hit twice. It does the damage from the basic, and then it does the percentile damage from the basic. So you can get through death proofs that way. I find that a little bit weird, but whatever. So we're going for Luke Cage now. I don't even know how he lost his charges. Uh, I guess from splash damage or something, but he's all out of charges. There he goes. Now Misty Knight is stunned, but she'll drop it right away from the rebalance. We'll switch to Colleen, trying to keep them both alive. But as you see, guys, this was just a joke. Uh, as soon as the drain mechanic came in from the death proofs, they couldn't hurt me. They couldn't take anybody down past 100% life. I'll actually switch to Misty just to give Colleen one more chance at it with that offense up. And, uh, yeah. No luck for Colleen. There she goes. Next is Misty. She gets beat up by Phylavel. And now she'll get taken out by the Moon Dragon Basic. Absolute devastation, guys. Uh, I think Infinity Watch... Absolutely crushes heroes for higher and I'm all for that. However, I think you need them for enemy infinity watch on defense too. So keep your eyes out for more hero for higher counters down the road. Here's tag number seven. Nothing special here. About an 80,000 punch down Black Order into uh, Astonishing X-Men. You can kind of beat the Black Order with Astonishing X-Men uh, when you're playing it. But when you're playing against the Astonishing X-Men AI, it's very easy to take them out. So we go ahead. We shoot the Bishop of all his buffs. He doesn't open up with his special, so he's kind of foregoing that offense up. 
We knock him into yellow, so Beast gives everyone buffs. Thanos flips the buffs, and then these Spanish Knights men basically die. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'll have offense down now, and I'm kind of thinking, like, who, who can I kill here? I think we try for the Bishop, I believe, and I think we actually get it. Any day now. Yeah, there you go. We ultimate the bishop. He already had a vulnerable on him, so the striker from Corvus goes again, and now bishop's done. So the astonishing next men, you got to kind of okay, Iceman killed himself, or at least took his first life anyway. Uh, you got to make the decision if you want to go for beast first, or if you have the opportunity to take up bishop. Um, if you have the opportunity to take up bishop, it's a great move. Uh, that was a little risky the way I did it there. Beast could have healed up, but I also knew that because I was using Black Order, it wouldn't have mattered if. Beast kept healing them up. Thanos eventually would have reached his ult and cleared this board out. We got blind here, so we might as well taunt. We do the Ebony Maw ult to rewind everybody. That does not activate uh, Beast's passive. And then Beast, he basically just goes out here. He's a special. Boom, Beast is gone. And obviously we, uh, we're going to win this. Not a big surprise there, being that it was a punch down and all. I don't know why I switched into that, but that's okay. Thanos will snap them all out of existence. There you go. Easy win. So we're actually on 7 for 7 right now. It's pretty good. And we've been dealing with these big teams. Most of them over 500k. Actually, most of them over 600k, I believe. So let's keep that going. And we're going to do attack number 8 now. And this is a lower one. This is my newly leveled X-Factor with Ultron against Wave 1. But instead of Black Widow, they use Captain Marvel, which does make the team substantially worse. Now Longshot eats that ult to the face, which is pretty scary. I summon in one Ultron bot, uh, so I instantly learned, like, hey, don't use Ultron with this team. It's very bad. Uh, but he gives one speed bot, which I guess is cool. We group them all together. Uh, I debated using the basic on Thor here to stop the charges from going up, and instead I go for the finish on Captain Marvel and Hawkeye. We use a special here to put Taunt on all of our uh, dupes. Oh, sorry, that's an offense up bot. Well, that, that's much better than a speed bot. I just beat up on the uh, Thor here. Give everyone offense down. Unfortunately, Hulk will clear it. We'll go ahead and hit him with a big damage anyway. Now, I think my Ultron's going to have to ult into that. Nope. Never mind. So we go ahead and we use the special again just to hit everybody for a lot of damage. Could have ultimate the, the Thor there and taken him out, but I'm still learning and playing around with the uh, X-Factor, and I'm very happy with how they play. It's a lot of fun. The best part about Infinity Watch is it forced me to build up uh, X-Factor, and I'm having just so much fun with them. So, there you go. Seize the cape on jump. Uh, not a surprise win, though. Attack number nine. Uh, this is a pretty big punch down. This is like Kestrel Fury plus a couple of my OP leftovers. Uh, Civ Ghost Rider is kind of garbage. Uh, but basically Kestrel and Fury could probably 2v5 this. It was a pretty weak strife. I have a pretty strong Kestrel. Pull off everything, give him defense down, knock him out. Uh, so we're not going to be stuck behind strife at all, which basically means that this is over. We'll try and peel off the defense up and the deflex. We get nothing, which is fine. We'll try and steal some stuff for Fury so that he spreads it. Whatever clone he was going to do gets taken out by Kestrelite, which is why I say Kestrel Fury could probably 2v5 this. I mean, don't do that, but just... They really only need three bodies to eat some of the... Uh, Mind controls and stuff like that. Sinister is super low. Can we take him out? Yes, we can. Uh, oh, we're actually ultimate the Sabertooth there. Um, but that's okay. Sabertooth goes down, and then we take out the uh, Sinister right there after. So we got our barrier up, even though it's pretty unnecessary. You saw I opened up with the special from Invisible Woman just to clear some of the slows. I think that's probably the right call right 
And now it's just M left. She didn't have her special up just yet, so she's gonna get beat up by this Kestrel passive. Pretty big punch down, not a surprise there. This next fight is also punch down, but I was very impressed with it, and I think it's gonna be really good. Hey guys, sir, this transition is a little jarring. Uh, I had to re-record just this last fight in this uh, video because I definitely whiffed a lot of the explanation on it. So I didn't want to redo everything. I just want to redo this because it's so important and so cool. I'm talking about my Falcon Doom team with some Skilletary in there against the Infinity Wash. Now it is 100k punch down. We're going to see why it works, how it works. And in the future, we're going to have a certain character coming out called Captain Sam. And he's going to replace uh, Punisher in this team. And I think it's going to be a pretty reliable punch down into uh, Infinity Watch up to Moon Dragon and Phylavel being at around 100k. After that, it'll get a little hairy, but let's just get into it and you'll see why. So this is 100k punch down. Pretty weak Moon Dragon, pretty weak Phylavel. However, it's Cargo Bay, so they get covered right away with uh, stealth. But the reason this team is so dangerous is because Black Widow gives speed up to everybody. Well, not everybody, but she gives speed up and she gives it to Doom, which is amazing. She also gives it to Falcon, which is amazing. It's going to lead to them using their abilities faster. And Red Guardian really stalls out the Infinity Watch. Now, unfortunately, they get him low enough uh, that he's not going to get his taunt back up. But this is where Captain Sam would come in. Captain Sam could have a taunt up when Red Guardian doesn't. Not to mention the ability energy. Not to mention uh, more crits from our vulnerables for Doom. Because I'm probably going to use him as a raider. Uh, he just he's gonna do so much better than what Punisher does. You see, all Punisher's really doing is clearing some deflex, and then here he goes. He's dead right here, I believe. No, oh, no, now he's dead. So I mean, he did eat some cool abilities, but Captain Sam would eaten them just as well, and lived. But anyway, so here comes the magic part. Doom gets his ult from all the speed that he's accrued with the Black Widow and with the Falcon doing their thing. Imagine even more speed from Captain Sam making this happen faster. They no longer have immunity because they each take in their turn. They now have defense down because of the charges on Doom. He flips everything. So even when these guys are stronger, it's still going to kill them with that ultimate from Doom. Never loses their first life. And you're going to see my Falcon is getting to use his ult so much because of all the buffs that the Infinity Watch has. Uh get to stun Gamora with your uh, Black Widow. That's amazing. So she's not going to get the ult. She's not going to get to do all her crazy stuff. We go ahead and we finish off. So you see how well this went? Yes, it's a punch down. Punisher was dead weight. Um, I think this is going to work. Maybe not on a punch across, but maybe on like a 50k punch down up to around the 600, maybe 650k limit if you're using like a 700k team which I definitely think I'm going to go for. Uh, being a person in your alliance who can take out not one but two Infinity Watch teams is going to pay off huge, especially if you're like my alliance and you get faced these killer alliances uh, that are, you know, 36 million power punch up and you're dealing with the Infinity Watch teams. We had one Infinity Watch team that was 900k. But anyway, uh, you see Black Widow. She does it again, gives everybody a bunch of speed. I opt not to use the special from Doom there because I'd rather have the bots up to eat the Gamora's attacks. Again, my Red Guardian is too low. Uh, when he does get to use a special, he's going to get healed all the way up, but he's not going to get uh, taunt. Captain Sam would have had taunt there. So I think this is going to be a really interesting way to deal with Infinity Watch. Pretty happy that I stumbled upon it. Black Widow goes down. You know, she, she did her job. But here you go. So a really good, solid win against uh, the craziest new team in the game. Uh, and that was great. So now, how did we do on the war? Well, this, these numbers don't really make much sense. Put them in the toes, and we won. Check out this damage, 19.5. Red, you jerk, you had to put 19.8 up. Whatever. Okay, you're good, I get it. But uh, yeah, you're good, Red. Good job. Good shout out to Red. He uh, held it down on this war for sure. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I hope you're happy, healthy, and having fun. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.